Next up, we're going to hear from Philip Giambri, everybody. Woo! This is called playing Picasso. It's late. I'm sitting alone at the bar working on my fourth double jack. I'm feeling pretty mellow. She leans across two seats, stares me dead in the face, and slurs out, You look just like Pablo Picasso. She's really pretty. I guess late 30s, early 40s, maybe. Sculpted cheekbones, a great body packed in tight black leather. Her hair is long and straight and dyed black with bangs almost covering those haunted, crazy eyes. Exactly the woman I've always been a sucker for after I had a few too many drinks. Pablo Picasso, yeah, I bet you get that all the time, huh? No, not really. She spots my fancy camera on the bar. Hey, you're a photographer. Sometimes, mostly I just tell stories. She flashes a broad grin. Well, hey, me too. And she drifts off into some rambling drug story with a couple of lame attempts at being funny. You know, everything you say seems to have a sardonic twist of some kind, like a comedian or something. She smiles suggestively. Well, I am a comedian. Really? What kind of comedy do you do? She says, Dada. <laughs> a Dada comedian. Really? Could she possibly be that hip? I don't think so. She asks, what kind of comedy do you do? I repeat, I'm not a comic, I tell stories. She coyly replies, well, I'm sure that my stories are a hell of a lot more interesting than yours as she slowly moves her face and her lips in close to an attack position. Come on, I have a Speedo at home that's older than you. She dusts me off saying, you couldn't come close to my stories. Have you ever done crack? No, I stopped at Mescaline and Coke, you obviously didn't. She again ignores my comment. What comedians do you like? I don't know. Richard Pryor, Lenny Bruce, Andy Kaufman, Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman, you know, everybody thinks I am Sarah Silverman. Really? I could see that actually in a dark bar with enough drink she could pass for Sarah Silverman. And Andy Kaufman was my hero. He was my role model. She rests her hand on my thigh. I see Alice instantly kicks in, telling my body I'm 40 years old again, and Jack Daniels has whispered in my head, go for it, man, you can do this. She seems pretty intelligent, somewhat creative, very sexy, attractive, and really fucked up. Just my kind of girl. Why do they still taunt me, these beautiful, intelligent crazies? Don't she see the leftover crazy in these old eyes past the wrinkles and the beat-up face? Shouldn't she be able to see in me that it doesn't work? I'm living proof. I have all the scars of battles lost with crazies, drugs, and booze. More important, why do I feel this incredible emotional and sexual magnetism here? It's an old feeling. I sure miss it. Feels good. Is it just the Cialis and the Jack Daniels? Purely a chemical reaction? I don't think so. I know better. But still, I want to throw her on the back of a 60 Triumph Bonneville, race off to some cheap motel and make hard bandit love with her. Yeah, we're crazy. That's what we do, ain't it? Feel bad tomorrow? We're both losers, you know. Heading for a Bonnie and Clyde ending here. Pablo Picasso, Sarah Silverman. Two really fucked up souls irreversibly driving into a head-on, dead-on collision. She leans in and she hugs me way too tight. I feel myself wanting a lot more, but you know, age sometimes occasionally produces little bits of wisdom. I grab my camera and I head for the door. I hear her yelling at me, hey Pablo, why are you leaving, man? I've been in the same sad movie before, way too many times. I'm not hanging around for the bad ending this time. This is called a toast to, thank you. This is called a toast to Johnny E. You could always find Johnny E. in the last seat at the end of the bar for happy hour at the International over on First Avenue. Three fingers bushmill, neat. Always dressed to the nines with a carefully arranged and shellacked comb over. Wearing that classic powder blue polyester sport coat he got 50 years ago back in 72 on his way home from Nam. Hey, Johnny E., I haven't seen you for a while. Where you been, man? Ah. Uh, Damn ambulance took me to emergency at Bellevue instead of the VA hospital. Eight weeks I'm there with pneumonia and then they told me I got a bad liver to boot. Fucking landlord rents out my apartment to a woman with a kid. Cause he hasn't seen me, he thinks I'm dead. 35 years of my life he throws in the damn dumpster. And my car's missing. 
I go down to Toe Pound, they auction off my car for 75 bucks. They said I owed $2,300 in tow charges, fines, and storage fees. I got 468 bucks in my savings account. I'm running out of options here, you know? He spends happy hours at the International, a few more weeks till the stash runs out. Just trying to stay warm, keep a little buzz going. The weather's getting colder and panhandling ain't working for him. I run into him again, he's sleeping on the heat vent by the Chase Bank on 2nd Avenue. I spot him at 20. Hey Johnny, how's it going, man? Rejoice, rejoice, we got no choice, right? Maybe I need to try the VA again, you know? I was a door gunner on a Huey back in Nam. Company A, 1st Battalion, 35th Infantry. I lit up a lot of VC with that big 50, man. No retreat, no surrender. Fucking A, bud. They owe us something, right? I don't see Johnny anymore that winter on the street or at the International. Late one night, I'm over at the Black and White on 10th Street, shooting a ship with Harry the Hat. Out of nowhere, he says, hey, remember Johnny E? Frankie the cop tells me they found him dead in a room over at the St. Mark's Hotel back in March. Yeah, he was face down in a Swanson TV dinner. Mac and cheese, I think it was. Still wearing that fucking polyester sport coat. You know, it's sad. Frankie said nobody claimed his body. Believe that shit. Hey, Billy, three fingers bush built neat. For Johnny E. No retreat, no surrender. Fucking A, brother. Thank you. This is called uh, Broken Bed Modega Beer. There's a link here. They're all in bars, if you know that. <laughs> Saturday night, East Village. Long happy hour at Blue and Gold Bar. Fired up of well drinks, Blondie and Boho are ready to stalk. Two coyotes heading south, prowling the edge of Chinatown. So they find a joint with loud music blasting from a tenement basement. Grab a couple of drinks and a seat way in the back. Suddenly surrounded by middle-aged Jersey couples, fat, tired, and worn out. Looking to relive their college days, I guess. Ain't long before Blondie and Boho are jumping, swaying, shaking hair, and shaking ass. Bodies vibrating to badass indie music, making out and tongue dancing between drinks. Jersey couples stare, awkward, nervous, embarrassed by the shameful display, but secretly wishing they still had that kind of passion. Blonde coyote girl goes to the bar for refills, bumps their table, spills all their drinks. Jersey couples are pissed. They get up and leave, don't even wait to see the band they came for. I just know they're talking shit about the juvenile behavior of those two coyotes doing what they're doing. But I'm thinking they're going to go home and jump in the sack and just for a few minutes try to be coyotes too. <laughs> Good luck with that, Jack. Blondie and Boho stay late till all the bands are done, head back to the East Village talking and thinking dirty thoughts, itching for some playtime. Those two coyotes are going to break the damn bed again, drink warm bodega beer and hug till the sun comes up. Because that's what you do early Sunday morning, East Village. Thank you. My last piece is called Dancing on Razor Blades. Sure. Late night, East Village. Rain glistens off shattered street glass like fallen stars. Blondie and Boho roam in the streets. Long-legged beauty and full-length leather taking long strides of black cowboy boots. Blonde hair blowing, wild open, ho open coat, then a mini skirt and Ramon's t-shirt pushing out hard nipples. She's dragging along that old hipster boho, sporting a black pork pie and Chuck Taylor high tops. Looking for all the world like some sexy 60s trucking cartoon couple. Coyote stalking Alphabet City, hungry for the last taste of pre-gentrification, looking to bite off and chew up the remaining conversations on music, poetry, love, and art, lingering in dive bars, still open to poets, rockers, artists, and crazies. A broken wing angel and a poet out of rhyme, juking the East Village dive bars. Drink a little, dance a little, making out at the bar, not caring who's looking. Feel the music, feeling the love. Hit the streets again, on the prowl, hungry for the next joint. They keep rolling on bar after bar till there ain't no more left. Drinking too much, talking shit, laughing too loud, groping under street lights, refusing to submit to daylight ever. They're dancing on razor blades, but they taste freedom in the blood. Their time's passing fast, they know it. Soon there'll be nowhere left to go for poets, rockers, artists, and crazies. Hey, fuck burning candles at both ends. Douse them in gasoline, turn up the music. Drink, smoke, laugh, make love. Let the flames be our final sunset. Baby, we got nothing left to lose. Thank you.